starting with this. Um, we're starting over here. Tell them to go first. Hmm? Don't deny him. He said it. He's excited. Are you really that excited to start? All right, go ahead, okay. Tyler and Logan. We believe he establishes it through this character, the setting. Okay, read, read, the story, oh, read the story. Read the story. Um, read the question. Well, read that. <laughs> read that too. But read the question. How does Hawthorne establish the setting in Young Good and Brown? Okay. We believe he establishes it. Oh, You're so excited. Can we believe he establishes it? <laughs> so, through the characters, some of the characters were uh, real citizens of family. Okay, they were, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, next question. How does the setting and location of Young Goodman Brown affect the plot? This story took place during the same moment of which affects the plot by making it mysterious and creepy. Okay. Um, I would say it was mysterious and creepy. Remember, he is a dark romantic, so would you say this story's a little dark? Yeah. It's very dark, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do you think, I should have asked this on, the, on one of those, that should have been a part of one of those questions. Do you think the setting is an important part of this story? I'll throw that out to anyone. It is, yeah. it's, it's in the forest. It's very important, all right? And that's a great point. It is a great point, because why is that a great point that you just made, Trevor? The fact yeah, that you're in, in the forest. See, so you uh, made a great point. You, you didn't even. I, I, I did. I made it for the uh, forest because it's a force. <laughs> it is a forest. Hey, time the romanticism. Huh? You're alone. You, you are alone in the forest, but what did the Puritans believe about the forest? They didn't live in the forest. That's right. So the Puritans believe that Satan lived in the forest. So. What if this was a. Uh, Made up to just appear the people. Like, kind of, since they believe that. Wait, is this story about a Puritan? Yeah. Why, well, GB? He's a he's a Puritan. Yes. You read the story, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Young Jim Brown is a Puritan, and so the fact that he goes into the forest, which is believed to be where Satan resided. That it makes it even the fact he does go into the forest even more of a bad thing, all right? And, and something that would not have been acceptable to the other people in the community. Remember, even Faith at the beginning is trying to get, he's telling her that he has to go to a meeting and she keeps trying to get him to stay back and all of this and stay with her, but he goes anyway. And also, I mean, and they're really, if you think about it, the, day, the forest would have been, uh, or the wood, a dangerous place for Puritans back then anyway, because they didn't always have the best relationship with the Native Americans. So, you know, oftentimes the Native Americans, they would be there or live in there or whatever. And so to go, especially to go along was very uh, dangerous. And in fact, there is a part where young Goodman Brown thinks to himself that uh, there could be, let's see, there could be a uh, Indian behind any tree or something like that. But anyway, so he knows that he knows it's dangerous for him to be going into the forest. So the forest, the setting of the story is extremely important. It's also important because as a romantic, remember nature played a huge part in their stories. And uh, remember the romantics also felt that uh, with nature, that you could go into nature and sort of find yourself, find your center. Well, isn't that sort of what maybe uh, Goodman Brown is doing? He's venturing into the forest, into nature, even though he shouldn't be, but he is going there to, to find out something. Uh, what is, in fact, let's talk about that for just a minute. What is it that's actually leading, and I don't mean just the, the, the traveler or the old man or whatever you want to call him. What is it about Goodman Brown, that might could be considered almost a character flaw, is it that leads him and keeps him going into the forest? Because he literally and figuratively is following a dark trail. What is it about him that causes him to continue to, to go into the forest, even though he knows he shouldn't be? Curiosity. Yes, that's exactly right. It's, it's his curiosity. 
And we think of curiosity as maybe being a positive, you know, somebody seeking knowledge or wanting to, to find out things or learn things or answers to questions that they have. But you have to remember, the Puritan society was all about community and not individuality. So if you think of it that way, his curiosity and the fact that it made him do something that ended up being so detrimental to him was a bad, a bad thing. It was a negative thing. Right? So he was going against the community, and it was his curiosity that drove him to do that. Okay, he's got, all right, let's start over here with you ladies. Number two. How do you think Brown would have turned out if he had stayed at home that evening? Do you think he would have been happier? Um, he wouldn't have lost all his faith in humanity, and yes, he would have been happier. Okay, because as a result of him continuing to go into the forest, and by the way, I just want to point this out. He, remember, he keeps thinking he's going to turn back three times. He denies what he knows he should be doing, and he continues because of his curiosity three times to continue down the dark trail. That's no accident. The number three. Yeah, I know. Didn't we learn about that? Yes. So three is always a very significant number in literature. Uh, seven is always significant, but three especially. So that's he denies what he has it right up here and continues to go down three times uh, down the dark trail. So he literally loses his faith in humanity. And by the way, and I think that's someone's question, but the, the name faith is no accident. He loses his faith, both, both his faith here, 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 and uh, his life faith. And had he done what he knew was really right, that would not have happened. If he just turned back and not gone so far into the woods, then he would have remained a happier man because as it is, as it turned out, because he did lose his faith in humanity and faith his wife because he came to find out what type of person she really was and she wasn't when he thought he, she wasn't the woman he thought he'd marry, then it made him a die a bitter man. So he was, went into old age and died very, very bitter. Um, and so, yes, he probably would have remained, he would have been happier had he not have let his curiosity get the best of it. Okay, did y'all have another part? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so the Puritan belief that Satan resided in the woods. Um, what was what was the rest of your question? Uh, what Puritan Okay, yeah. And also, um, this, I kind of mentioned this, but this idea that, remember, the Puritans were very much about community. You didn't have this thought of individuality. So what he's doing is going very much against the community. Uh, it's going against the community and the other Puritans, and that he continues to go down this dark trail, but also that he uh, breaks from the community. Right? He's doing something he shouldn't be doing, and it's, his curiosity is taking him down that trail. Okay, good. Number three, or well, I don't know, whatever number three. Um, so it says, how is faith significant in young Gilbert Brown's struggle to resist the forces of evil? And so the, we said that, you know, the entire time that he's in the woods, he's like, well, I have to go back to faith. I have to go back to faith. And then at the end, he sees her as a convert in the ritual, and it like destroys him. He's like, there's no hope left. So the entire time, faith was like his hope. And then in the end, it's all over the world. Okay, that's exactly right. So his wife's faith is what grounded him. By the way, how long had faith and Goodman Brown been married? Three months. There's three again. So they, they're newly married. They're all in the woods. And she doesn't want him to go into the woods. She wants him to stay back with her. Well, now we know why she didn't want him going in the woods because she was about to be the new convert. Um, well, I'm not going to get into that because I think it's part of someone else's question. But, um, what my pretty, sweet, pretty wife, dost thou doubt me already? And look, we but three months married, and God bless you, and may you find all well when you come back. And so, anyway, she doesn't want him going, and uh, they kept me back a while, and so 
that's what he tells the the traveler when he's an old man when he meets up with him and he's you know saying well you're late goodman brown and he said faith kept me back so he literally means faith is why but also his faith in his his ideas as a as a puritan uh but also his faith in, in humanity so you could go in all those directions but his faith has kept him back all right good did y'all have another part okay uh, it says, what example of foreshadowing do you see in dialogue between faith and Goodman Brown? And so, faith is pretty much just telling him, don't go, it's a bad idea, it's a bad idea. And then we also said that um, later he compares faith to an angel, and so it's representing him like literally turning away from all things good. That's exactly right. Yes. So he's literally, when he turns around away from faith, his wife, he is turning away from the things that are good and you know those Puritan ideas and this whole thing and he, he turns towards the darkness literally. Does somebody have as part of their question about the color pink of her ribbon? Anybody? Okay. I, I think so. I was thinking somebody did, so we'll wait on that then. All right, good. Any did y'all have any other part? Yeah. Oh wow. Oh gosh, sorry. No. Um <laughs> How does Hawthorne characterize the protagonist in Goodman Brown in the story? So he starts off and he's a very faithful guy, and it shows because he's like, I don't want to do this. I know it's bad. Let's just get it done really quickly and then move on from it. And so, you know, and then it says, what is Goodman Brown's character flaw, which leads to wandering in the woods and the loss of his soul? And so we said curiosity because he just wanted to know more. But we also put like pride because he knew that like he could handle it. He, yeah. He, he was like, oh, I want to know more and I can take it. I'm not going to be scared. Okay. Very good. Very good. By the way, um, I don't know. I might have already told y'all this, but Goodman was a term that the Puritans used. It means Mr. And so that would be like young Mr. Brown is what Goodman means. And then Goody, as in Goody Cloyd, would be Mrs. So, that's that, that's, yeah, that's right. It's not his name. That's just how he would be addressed. We don't really even know what his really what his first name would be. But speaking of names, you notice his last name is Brown. Symbolism. What would that tell you? The color brown. Hmm? Brown. Yes. Nature. Dirt of the earth. That's right. That's exactly right. Huh? <laughs> well, but actually, that's People kind of buried in dirt. Okay. Well, that's true. <laughs> he is of the earth. That's a good point. Very good point. But also, um, and you you said black. Wait, no, you said black would be dead. Would be death. Okay, so black would have a very negative connotation, right? So death. Uh, also evil, doesn't it? So he's brown, which would be not quite too evil, but he's kind of heading that direction a little bit. So all those things are, are very symbolic uh, of his last name. Okay, you know, have another part? No, no, that was it. Okay. Oh, also, what was that last question that you had? I wanted something I wanted to add to that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what was his character symbolic comes coming down to the wind. Okay. And y'all said curiosity in his pride. Oh, um, also, I just wanted to point out, too, probably, I think we might have talked about this a little bit yesterday, but, uh, you know, he's also um, arrogant. Yeah, and when we put pride, we were like, uh, it wasn't like just pride, but it was like, oh, that would never happen to me. Like, yes. That's, that's yeah. That's exactly. Pride. Exactly. So he thought that because his ancestors and his family had never gone that far into the woods, and again, the significance of that would be because it's breaking away from the Puritans and those ideas, and he was doing a big no-no to go out in the woods, and he continued to go deeper and deeper, but he said, my ancestors, my family had never been this far into the woods, and of course, uh, the traveler, the man, whatever uh has to set him straight on that and yes Newton brown as a matter of fact they did because i was there when they did these horrible terrible things which all goes to remember uh hawthorne was all about 
allegory. His tales are very allegorical, so there's always a teaching moment. So he, he keeps, you know, that's always just kind of the forethought is that Goodman Brown's ancestors, namely his grandfather, had um, done something terrible, bad to uh, people that would be considered others. Okay, so those who were different. So they were very intolerant. And so he's teaching, also, and we see that part of, well, there's several lessons in this story, but that certainly would be one is, um, you know, how bad intolerance is, or that, you know, you should be tolerant of people, and because his ancestors were not. All right, let's go. We probably have just enough time to get to maybe one more question. All right, go okay. ahead. Okay. Says, what unholy ceremony does Goodman Brown encounter in the forest, and how does he respond to the offer he is given? Um, so he comes across some like witch cult ritual stuff going on in the forest, and it okay, it says what offer is he given, but it mm -hmm. seems more like you're gonna do like he's being he wants they want him. Okay, hold up. That's okay. No. They want him to join them. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. And he like, he, his wife is there, so she's like, what? Mm -hmm. And then, um, and he like yells her name, and then he just kind of like, he just kind of like is there, and then he wakes up in the street. Okay. So. Okay. Who, who so you? Faith is there, his wife. In fact, she's a new convert, isn't she? Yeah. And who else is there? Who else does he see at this gathering? Um, well, a bunch of fiend worshippers. Okay. Um, fiend worshippers, so Satanists or witches. Who else? Wasn't it like the pastor or something? The, he, the, guy. the minister? Deacon Gookin, oh, yeah. Deacon Gookin, Goody Cloyce, who taught him the catechism when he was a little boy, and others, elders, other people from his church. So other Puritans, others from the community, people that he would have never, ever, ever guessed would be a part, much less his wife Faith, that would be a part of something some type of ritual, which certainly would be satanic or witchcraft or something very, very, very dark. So, and not only that, but you said fiend worshipers, also Indian, Native American, others from other well-respected people from other communities. So Hawthorne is showing, remember, if it's part of the allegory, a part of the learning lesson, our moral of this story is acceptance acceptance of others and to and uh, in for I'm trying to say for tolerance to be more tolerant. And this is certainly a place where he's doing that because you notice in this group there's everyone there's Puritans there's the sav what they consider to be the savages. Remember the uh, Puritans very much looked down at the Native Americans. Of course. They always had a kind of a ongoing beef with them, but even besides that, they thought they were they would call them the savages. But everyone was at this gathering, and it wasn't just the fiend worshippers or the savages. It were, were other Puritans and other well-respected people that were at this gathering. So tolerance, acceptance of everyone. All right, let's leave it there. Let's just remember. We'll pick up with y'all's questions. We'll finish up and then we'll kind of do a little bit more analysis and breaking some things down. Uh, you want these stores? Yeah, let me go ahead and have those back because I'll need them for my, my, my fifth period class. Yeah, and I'll take the cards too. Well, I, yeah, let me go ahead and have them. And I'll just give them back to y'all tomorrow. You can keep whatever y'all want to do. Oh, it's just a bit of 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 a bit
Oh, you see, I also forget 